Hey guys, I'm John Fryer. Welcome to Fryer Funds. Welcome to my kitchen. And welcome to the Fryer Feast series. In this series, we took $15,000. We're investing it into individual companies with all investment decisions made over the weekend to be executed on Monday. This is for people who work nine to five, who don't have time to trade during the week or make decisions during the week. So we focus on the weekend execution and go from there. Now, I want to point out, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. But with that said, let's dive in, see what happened this week and where we're going from here. All right, guys, so let's start this saying, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. But with that, we have a really big week this week. A lot of earnings happen, a lot of crazy stuff is going on. Next week is another big week of earnings. So we're gonna get into this. Uh, to start off with, we're at almost 18,000 again. Our peak was of course almost 19,000, so we're not there, but 18,000, almost 20% since we started back in April, just, just over three months ago. So that's where we're at, uh, but a lot of things are changing this week. So let's get into this. So first, when we started, or since we started, the S&P 500 is up about 14.5%. Meanwhile, we're up just under 20%, like I said a minute ago. So we are doing quite a bit better, um, about 30% better than the S&P 500. I'd like to do better than that going forward, so that's our goal. Uh, the Grill, which are companies that will recover when COVID starts to die off, like the airlines and stuff, we've only made $71, so virtually nothing. We've taken profits, we took some back in June, but everything's come back down, more cases have come up, so overall we've only made $71. Meanwhile, the frying pan and the crock pot, the companies that do well during COVID and that will do continue to do well afterward, uh, those two combined make up all of our profits. So lesson one, take more profits when those stocks skyrocket. Back in June, if we would have taken more profits than we did, rather than throwing more into it, uh, we would have done a lot better. So going forward, we're going to look at exit points, uh, not just yet because we're not there, but we'll look at exit points, take profits sooner, particularly with those in the grill, because I'm expecting those to be very volatile and jump around a lot when COVID news comes out or good COVID news comes out. Uh, lesson two, the original goal for this uh, portfolio was to make it super simple, make it so that people that are working full time can keep up, just do actions on the weekend. However, even I couldn't keep up with doing that. Um, and I kind of do this as, as my full-time job in a sense. One, it's way too complex. There's a hundred holdings in there. And this is one of the most complex time uh, for investing in history with COVID throwing everything up. We've got the election, uh, we've had the riots and the Black Lives Matter movement, which for that, I will say that Black Lives do matter. I'm on that side, but I'm not gonna go into it. Um, so going forward, we wanna simplify this portfolio and make it much easier for everyone to keep up with, as well as so I can keep up with giving you guys updates and try to beat the S&P 500 by making it simpler. So we're gonna cut these things down. Now, um, currently there are 53 companies sitting in the grill. I've already gone through all of them. I've spent a lot of time with all the companies in there, analyzing them, and I'm cutting it down to 34 different companies. I'm not gonna go into exactly how I pick them necessarily at this point, but that's where I'm cutting it down to. Uh, the frying pan is sitting at about 30 companies and the crock pot's about 15, or is 15. Um, those will also change, but not until after this next week when we have a lot more earnings coming out. So uh, another week for the frying pan and the crock pot, I'm gonna kind of leave those. There's just a little bit of action to take there. But the grill's getting completely reworked to make it much simpler and much easier to take profits when they do spike. Um, so all the news going on, all the things we have to consider here. COVID-19 has not started, started to disappear. Uh, we are having more and more cases. Of course, part of that is just because there's more testing. However, whatever the case is, it's, an, it's affecting how investors are investing, how companies are running. So we're not really expecting, um, even if things start to die off and get better, it'll probably be at least two years before consumer behavior gets back to normal. And then the unemployment bonus has ended. As of this recording, Sunday, um, August 2nd, 
the government is still working on figuring out a new unemployment bonus. It'll probably be $200 or $400 per week instead of the original $600, so people have less money to spend. They spent a lot of money on Apple, apparently. Apple earnings came out this last week and dominated. Uh, and the stock not only skyrocketed, but they're also going to do a four-for-one split, which will be really cool. That'll be the end of August. Um, so we'll, we will definitely take advantage of that because when it does split, I'm expecting it to go up as more people will be able to buy it, particularly on Robinhood, which are investors like us. So um, instead of traveling, what we've noticed is a lot of people are camping. And so all of the camping stocks have done really, really well. That was kind of unexpected because normally in the recession, camping, uh, particular, particularly the expensive part of camping, like RVs and um, ATVs and stuff, don't do well. Well, they have done well. Those companies have skyrocketed. Unfortunately, didn't see that coming. Didn't have any position to really take advantage of that in this portfolio. But going forward, as I rework the, um, the frying pan this next week, we'll see if there's still opportunity there. Uh, people working from home will continue to do that for the next 10 months or so. And even after the big work from home, everyone does it, uh, kind of dies off as we get a vaccine and stuff for COVID. I'm still expecting a lot more people to work from home on a regular basis, even if it's only a few days a week going forward. And we will probably never get back to as many people in the office as we currently have, at least percentage wise. Uh, corporate travel. So going to events and stuff that will pick back up, but it'll probably be years before it gets back to where it was in 2019. Uh, people are used to Zoom now or WebEx or whatever platform they're using for their video calls. So I'm expecting a lot more virtual meetings going into the future, a lot faster than what it was. So even though corporate travel is not coming back, I do expect a bounce, but it won't get back to 2019 levels uh, anytime soon, if ever, or at least eh, ever eh, with the current population. Um, another really big trend, houses have started to grow tremendously and sell really well. Mortgage rates are really low. A lot of people want to get out of the city, get into the suburbs to get away from the virus. Um, I know here in Utah, the two biggest home builders are planning on building twice as many homes as they normally do this next year. So houses are really selling. And with everyone staying home, everyone's doing home improvement projects. Now we've seen that coming. We bought Home Depot, we bought Lowe's. There was a couple other opportunities there that we missed, like uh, Liquid Lumberdators, or Liquid, oh, I can't say it, LL. Um, <laughs> it's another company that sells lumber and a lot of house uh, home improvement stuff. Didn't, I, I was looking for other companies to invest there. I didn't find that one, didn't think of it. So, but we did capture profits with Home Depot and Lowe's, still have some Lowe's positions. So as we rework the frying pan this next week, this will be another thing that we'll take into consideration. Uh, with that, so let's look at what we're going to do tomorrow. So for the frying pan, the crock pot, um, just a couple little things. Stitch Fix is hitting kind of a floor. So we're going to buy three more shares to lower our cost basis, which is about 10, 11% under where we're currently at. Um, it, it's been selling off the last couple weeks. There's no indication as to why. I still think sticks, Stitch Fix is a good investment, not only during COVID as more people shop online, but even afterward as it will continue to be a big online clothing store uh, for fashion and stuff. Uh, and then the other two, Snapchat and Facebook. So Facebook reported earnings, as did Snapchat, and Facebook blew it out of the water. Its stock has skyrocketed, and um, now it's become a little big for our portfolio. I do like it. Uh, I'm only doing this to kind of take profits and put it into Snap, who's kind of sold off recently. They're kind of hitting a floor as well. Um, I also think Snap, if TikTok gets shut down like they're talking, Snap could really skyrocket off that. If it doesn't, then, or if TikTok gets bought by like Microsoft or something, Snapchat could sell off a little more, but that's okay. Long term, I still think Snap is a good investment, as with Facebook, but I want to take the profits here. And we'll move it over to Snap because it could have a big bounce if TikTok does get shut down, even if it's temporarily. Um, so that's all we're doing with that. But the grill is a complete rework. So instead of going over like each individual action, which would take forever and it's a long list because um, we're going from 53 down to 34 stocks or something like that or companies. Um, and some of the companies are new. Some of them were completely exiting. Quite a few actually were completely exiting. So let's just go over what it actually looks like going forward. So originally, um, or the, the original value was 15,000 when we started this portfolio. So I'm going to keep things there to keep cash on the sideline. So we're looking at 33% of the original 15,000 or 5,000 into the grill, but it is less than 30% of the current 18,000 it's currently valued at. So 
we're looking at about a third into the grill. Uh, I'll do the same with the crock pot and, fr crock pot and frying pan. We'll probably do 30% there as well, give or take 5,000. Uh, we'll kind of see how things go this next week. There's a lot of earnings. It's going to be a busy week for me. Um, if you are just doing research on the weekends, this is probably a little more than what you can do. But once every quarter, you do this much research, and then you just let it sit for the next quarter with a little bit every week just to kind of make sure nothing moves around a lot. Now, that's kind of what the goal of this is. So if you're working full time, once every three months, you just got to spend a lot of time kind of keeping up with earnings, seeing what's going on. Um, but yeah, so let, let, let's take a look at the grill here. Uh, so number one, hotels and casinos. Now they're kind of the same. These casinos also run hotels. Um, but these three hotel stocks are different in that they are, um, instead of a big chain that's nationwide, they're kind of segmented and more on the real estate sort of side. So these three hotels and then these three casinos, 5% altogether. Um, Wynn and MGM, their stock tends to move about the same. And then uh, GDEN is a little bit different, a little bit better in some ways. So 5% overall between these two and then only a half a percent in win MGM because they the stocks kind of perform the same. Now I will say throughout all of the grill, I have checked all their balance sheets. They may not necessarily be the best balance sheet in the world, but they're good enough that the companies will survive the pandemic, assuming the pandemic doesn't last for several years. If that's the case, it, you can throw all this out the water. But as long as the pandemic is restricted within the next year or less, um, all these companies will survive. Their stocks jumped a lot in June when uh, the, the curve started to flatten with cases and stuff. So I'm expecting all these to spike really well, much better than the other ones we've had in here. So I've done a lot of research and this is what I've boiled it down to. So these three hotel companies and then these three casino hotels, um, overall 5%. And then this is the number of shares for my portfolio. So if you've got less than 15,000 or you're putting less than 5,000 all together into this, you can do a different percentage or different shares if you're following this percentage. Just take the share price into the dollar amount that you end up with um, and do the math there. So again, not financial advice, not legal advice. This is just what I'm doing. Consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. Uh, moving on, airlines. We have a lot of companies and airlines right now, so we're cutting it down to these four. Three actual airlines, American Airlines, Spirit, and United Airlines. And then um, Spirit, or uh, I forget the exact name of this company, but they do airplane parts for Boeing. Now I did have Boeing in here. I had a bunch of other airlines as well, but looking not directly at the company, but at the stock and the way it performed back in June. And since then, and looking forward, these are the stocks that I'm expecting to have the best recovery when COVID starts to die off and the curve starts to flatten. So I'm consolidating down to these four. Now I wouldn't say these are the greatest long-term, like Southwest Airlines, that company is great. If you're actually wanting to invest in airlines for 20 years, Southwest is probably better. But as for the recovery of the stock, not necessarily the company, when the curve starts to flatten, these are the ones I think will do best. So I'm consolidating down to these four companies. Um, but I'm not expecting a full recovery by any of them for a long time. So I'm expecting the bounce. We'll take the bounce. We'll take our profits this time. And then if it sells off, great, we can get back into it. And if not, we have great profits and we'll do it correctly this time, unlike we did back in June. Uh, restaurants, we currently own a lot of restaurants, so I'm boiling it down to these three. You got Denny's, Dave & Buster's, and Red Robin. They're currently all sitting about the lowest. They've got the best recovery possibility. They moved a lot back in June. So yes, other companies may be better, um, but again, I'm looking at these stocks and their bounce back, and these companies, along with everyone else in this list, are going to survive uh, based on their balance sheets, unless of course the pandemic lasted forever but that's a whole different the, the we would be in a lot more trouble than this so restaurants these three denny's dave and busters red robin uh the retail plays or retail stocks um again we have a bunch of these right now some clothing companies we're tossing all those these are the stocks that's going to bounce back i think best in terms of the stock so you've got kohl's macy's and nordstrom um, and then oil kind of the same thing We've got a handful of oil plays, including USO, the price of oil itself, which may bounce back. But these oil companies, I think, will bounce back the best as things start to pick back up when cruise lines and airlines and everything open up. Oil prices, I actually don't think are going to go up anytime soon. Demand for oil is going to continue to go down. Up from here, probably, but 
it's never going to reach 2019 levels again because renewable energy and stuff. So these will be quick bounces when things start to flatten off. We'll take our profits just like everything else. But uh, MRO, OXY, and WTI, 1% um, each one of those. Uh, theme parks, this is kind of where we're sitting. We do have Disney as well. Uh, we had Comcast, but we sold off of that a week or two ago. Um, but theme parks, you got SeaWorld, Fun and Six Flags. Uh, I forget what Fun is off the top of my head somehow. But those are the theme parks. Movie theaters, now we did have AMC. We took profits. That was a good one. However, um, there was talk about AMC going bankrupt, so I wanted to exit the position a few weeks ago, and we did, which worked out because it did drop. It's come back up a bit, not quite to where it was when we um, originally sold, I don't believe. But we're going to get back into it because it doesn't look like they are going to go bankrupt. They've got plenty of cash on hand now. They've got this new deal with Universal uh, that's going to reset a lot of things. Movie theaters will be opening up hopefully in the next month or two, please, because I really want to go see movies. But um, So we're getting back into AMC, and then IMAX and Cinemark we still own. But um, movie theaters still have a lot of upward trend, and that actually might be a sooner one if they open up and do really well. Uh, cruise lines, sticking with the three. We already have these that kind of stay the same, so that's where we're at. Uh, I think I do need to buy a couple of shares to get here, but we'll see where we're at tomorrow. And then Ether. So these are six companies that are kind of related uh, to the bounce back or to COVID, but not in a category necessarily. So Eventbrite, I think, will recover pretty well as people want to go out and do things when you can go back to crowds. That might be a little longer term one, but uh, Google Trends does say it's going up. Groupon. Now, this one's interesting in that it has sold off really bad. It has died off. But I think more people are going to want to do Groupons to save money. However, with restaurants closed and a lot of events not happening, Groupon doesn't have as much product in a sense. So that's kind of a mix in that it makes sense to do well now, but they don't have the product, but the product will be coming back. So anyway, I like Groupon. It did end up doing a stock split just after we got into it. We lost out like 50%, uh, which really sucks, but I think it will come back. So we're keeping Groupon in there and buying a couple shares. iHeart, now I originally had this in the frying pan because I thought it'd do really well because it's streaming like all the other streaming companies. However, because of the way iHeart's actual underlying business works, it turns out it got really hurt by COVID. So it's actually in the frying pan and sh or in the grill and should bounce back. So I moved it over to here. We're doing 1%, uh, 20 stocks in that, which I think is where we're sitting. So no movement, just we're putting in this into the grill. Uh, MFA for mortgages. If the government passes the uh, unemployment bonus checks, more people should be able to pay their mortgages and stuff. This one could go lower if a lot more people kind of default on their mortgages. But as a lot of people are buying houses, this is this could be a long-term bounce back as well um, because they do primarily real estate mortgages. Sabre, now this is a software company that supplies all the airlines and hotels and car rentals and all them. Uh, they're the biggest main software source for them for keeping track of all their data. Uh, the only kind of down news on them is Southwest is moving away from them on one of their products uh, and moving to competitors over in the UK. Um, I, I think Travel Port's the name of it. But anyway, so Sabre, outside of that, um, still looks really good in terms of a recovery. And although Southwest is moving one of their products off Sabre, they're still using Sabre for some other things. So it's not 100% off. It's just Sabre. That, that's the only bad news I can really find about Sabre, other than, of course, the bounce back or the, the travel demand needs to bounce back before Sabre can really do well. Uh, and then Trivago for hotels. Uh, again, software play. Um, Similar to Kayak, if you haven't heard of Trivago, they do hotels, so you can find hotels a lot better. Um, but they are also finding they're shifting to more local because a lot of people are going camping. I know Yellowstone's really popular. I live close to there uh, right now. The, the demand for Yellowstone has really gone up. Uh, so Trivago will do, I think, really well as things start to come back online as well. And as they shift, even if things don't come back online quickly, as long as people are doing close to home vacations, Trivago can capitalize on that. And still bounce back well. So all of these are definitely related, but there's not like a category like cruise lines. All three cruise lines will behave about the same. I think they'll all survive. Um, but instead of going off just one, I wanted to split it up um, because of the way things kind of went last time, the way they moved. So uh, anyway, so that's what the grill looks like. 
Again, if you want to follow along, it's not financial advice, it's not legal advice, consult your own advisors, make your own decisions. But the grill here, this is a lot simpler than what we had. We're dropping a bunch of companies. We're keeping it simple every week. All we'll do is increase our positions if they continue to sell off, if there's a massive spike or more shutdowns. We have plenty of cash on the sideline to increase our positions to lower our cost basis. And if things start to come back and spike like they did back in June, we'll take profits this time and do much better. So yes, expect next week something very similar to this for the um, for the frying pan, possibly for the crock pot. I know Intel reported this last week and I'm really disappointed with, with what Intel's been doing. Uh, AMD is much better, I'm glad we got into AMD. So we'll probably exit Intel. I thought about doing that this week, but it's dropped so low I'm expecting a bounce back um, and I don't expect it to go much lower and they still have a good dividend and stuff. So I, I'm not doing anything with Intel this week, but we probably will exit out of that, along with some other big companies that aren't going to move like I want them to for the crock pot. Um, and then the frying pan, there's so many earnings this next week, it, it's gonna be insane. So next week, expect something very similar for the frying pan and the crock pot some moves too. Um, I know we didn't have Netflix, we didn't have Nvidia, both those are good companies. I wanted to see what they'd kind of do before I got into them. I wanted something more stable because remember when we started this back in April, we had no idea what was gonna happen. So I wanted more stable companies like IBM and Iron Mountain um, that have stayed stable, but they haven't grown and we're looking more for growth. We know what's going on now. So we'll probably shift some things around there too. But anyway, that's all I have. Um, I know it's a lot. So I will be releasing a video maybe this week, um, possibly down the road because this week's gonna be really busy on how I came up with these companies, how I analyzed them, uh, possible other ones to look for, things like that. So I'm not going into that here. This is just, I looked at the balance sheets. I did a lot of research. Uh, and these are the companies I boiled it down to. So if you wanna go do your own research, go for it, please do. Um, but I'll release a video down the road on how I came up with these and um, that. But I'm not gonna go into it here because that would make this video way too long. We're already over 20 minutes in. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, link down in the description to the spreadsheet for all three. Um, of course, you can follow this. This will be in the description as well. Get two free stocks when you sign up for Weeble, which is what I'm using for this portfolio. You can also sign up for Robinhood, which is an easier platform, uh, and get a free stock there. There's M1 Finance, and um, you can get, I think it's $100 still on that one. But use the link, sign up if you haven't started. Now is not necessarily a bad time to start. It never is. The S&P 500 is up quite a bit. We could start selling off just because of that. We don't know what this next quarter is going to be like. Um, but it's always a good time to start at least figuring out how to invest. But with that said, yep, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Thanks very much, and we'll talk to you next time.